uh, Vicki, why is family dinner time important? You know, I think that deserves a whole video. I agree. Family dinner. What is the importance oh. of family dinner, right? Well, you get to eat. <laughs> that, that is definitely one of them. You know, there's a lot of research that shows that one of the most important things to do is to be at the crossroads of your children, meaning when mm -hmm. they're coming and going in and out of the house. Family dinner ends up kind of being a filler for those crossroads at times. Especially if you can't be there right. at the time, like when the but kids are coming home can, from school or whatever. Even if you can, family dinner still is really great. A couple of reasons, we've got uh, several reasons. There is some research that shows that those families that have consistent family dinners, there's an increase in the child's grades when they eat family dinner. They've shown some... It improves their grades. Yeah. Well, there's correlation, at least, with kids who have improved right, grades. Right. Mm -hmm. There's correlation. Okay. There's also a reduced risk of drug abuse when they have consistent family dinners. Maybe I can say a word about correlation. Okay. Is that okay? Correlation is not causation. Yeah. In other words, we can't say that having dinner together as a family causes your children's grades to go up or it causes a reduction right. in addiction or substance abuse, right. but it is correlated. And I think that that's because when you make the effort to come together as a family and you're connecting and you're having those those conversations you're increasing yeah, the, it increases the conversation and the communication and effectiveness within the family those kinds of things all contribute to the measures that we're talking about here mm -hmm. family dinner is a place that can facilitate that and interestingly when we're eating it changes our brain chemistry because you're getting endorphins from the food. Yes. <laughs> and whatever it is that changes in right. our brains, we'll have different interactions over a meal than we would say if we were to just set up a bunch of chairs and have group therapy together. <laughs> it, it changes the dynamic and the energy. Now let me just give you a little word. It doesn't really matter what the food is. Okay, when we were first married, I was not much of a cook. I have an older sister that is an amazing cook. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I kind of shied away from the cooking because she was so good at it, I didn't need to learn. So we had some pretty bad experiences at first with the cooking. But huh? So it doesn't really have to be that you're a really great cook. What it does, what you do want to provide is time together and presence, being present. Right. And I might add with that, uh, putting away technology at the table. Yes. Be present. Yeah. Be here and now, not connected to your social media feed, mm -hmm. not texting someone who's not at the dinner table. Uh, be present with the people who are there. Good point. Vicki, I was, I was kind of joking at the beginning when I said, well, it's about getting to eat, right? Mm -hmm. you, you have to eat. So what we're saying is create an opportunity around something that you're going to do anyway and use that as a way to unify the family. You said that it's not about the food. Right. Uh, you're actually a really great cook, but that hasn't always been true. I remember a time, do you remember the first butternut squash that we ate? Oh yeah, I completely ruined that I one. I probably shouldn't tell on you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I had a few things to learn about what, how to cook one. Uh, it's, and I've had my adventures too. I've right. created some things you would not want to share with your enemies in terms of the food. It's not about the food. I, I still remember, um, do you remember we were watching the movie The Blind Side? with Sandra Bullock, uh, fun little show, but the family was coming together for dinner and the dad said to the kids, okay, everybody, make sure you thank mom for going down to the store and buying dinner. <laughs> she didn't even make it. And that's cool. That is totally cool. If you're doing takeout, that's fine. Just make sure you have a time together. It's not about the food. It's about the coming together <laughs> as a family. You know, I heard a really great thing about Family dinners is a place to talk about, you know, a lot of people are like, what did you learn today? What did you do with in class today? And uh, that can kind of put people on the spot sometimes. Mm. In a book that I read for my schooling, it said that one of the great questions about to talk about at the table is, what didn't go so well today? What failures did you have? You Wait, know, you can talk about that? Yeah, and that's, that's the great thing is you can have an opportunity and a place to oh. really open up and talk about things that didn't go so well. It takes kind of the sting and the scare out of mistakes and failures. And, you know, it really is important to help children to understand that failures 
are actually a step along the path to success. And this is a great way to talk about it. I love the way you just said that. Failure is a step along the path to success. I've been running my podcast, Live On Purpose Radio, since 2007. Mm -hmm. That's before podcasting was even a thing. And I've interviewed authors and successful people and speakers and people who have a message. Mm -hmm. And this is the most consistent thing that I've seen over all those years. Failure is part of the process. Get used to it. So you're saying bring that into the family dinner culture. To talk about those things that didn't go as well as you wish they would have. And as everybody is sharing that, you see, oh, I'm not so weird that I blew it. Right. That I had that failure, even if we want to call it that. It's just yeah. another step in my path to success. Right. And probably one of the last things we'll mention about family dinners is the consistency. You know, mm. everybody's, with social media is such a big thing. A lot of people want it to be Pinterest worthy, you know, a big picture. Oh, perfect. yeah. And I guarantee, especially if you have some teenagers, there are going to be some days where there is no conversation. It is really hard sometimes to get teenagers to speak to you. I find that. But just be consistent. Can be, yeah. Yeah. So be consistent, be consistent, constantly offer them the opportunity to be with you and to be present with you for at least one chunk of the day. That is more important than having the perfect spread mm -hmm. on the table. Something that you could post in your social media or would make the cover of Better Homes and Gardens. Not what we're after. Right. We the want consistency. Connection. We have dinner together as a family. Vicki, you and I were both fortunate enough to grow up in homes where that was the culture where we come together as a family, we have dinner, and those conversations will naturally unfold as you establish the consistency in that pattern and it becomes part of your family culture. And most importantly, connection will unfold. Creating a healthy, positive family culture is one of the most important things you can do as a parent. There's other resources available to you. If you haven't checked out the Parenting Power Up yet, please join us at Parenting Power Up dot com where you'll get all kinds of resources we've got your back